This morning, I'm drinking an herbal tea. Uh, this is my own concoction. Some of it I harvested myself because I've learned to harvest some things this year. Uh, I got horsetail up from the mountains and that's supposed to help your tissue repair. So I was hoping it would help with skin, hair, nail. Um, and then I have some peppermint that I saved from my garden and a couple immune boosting herbs like astragalus and maybe plantain. And um, our son Stephen works at a tea shop. So he's very knowledgeable about healing herbs. And so I got my, got my tea this morning and wanted to paint. I also wanted to share with you what I eat. I've had so many questions of, can you, can you share some examples of what you eat? And I wanted to do a whole week, but, um, I thought I did. And then when I downloaded the videos, I had five days. So we're going with five days. And now I have to pick out what color, what color I want for this little creature that I'm making. So you haven't guessed yet. I really like bright. I like bright, I like contrast. Paper plate, that's my painter's palette. Okay, so we're starting out with recording the meals last Thursday. And we had a Jamaican beef stew for our church meal and uh, so we had all shared a meal there had been dessert and <laughs> but for lunch my parents came over and I had some leftovers so I made some rice and roasted some um, broccoli and cauliflower and that's it Jamaican beef stew had I made it with a couple habaneros so it should have been scotch bonnet but I can't find them in my town so I went with the habaneros and it had a little bit of a kick to it. In the afternoon, I had a almond butter truffle. <laughs> this was right after Halloween and the kids had so much candy and I'm thankful that I didn't crave any candy, but I wanted to. I had gotten Twix for our family to, to give out, to hand out for Halloween and we don't have very many trick-or-treaters like five and so I bought Twix because I was like if I'm giving out candy I'm gonna get something that I want to eat afterwards and then I ended up getting a canker sore and I um chocolate gives me canker sores so I knew if I were to eat all the candy bars then it would have just made the canker sore worse and I would have gotten more and it would have been bad so I didn't eat any Halloween candy and I wanted to not because I was craving it, I just, I wanted to, but I didn't. Anyway, this is, uh, this is a few days later and I allowed myself to eat this truffle and it was delicious and um, I had just gotten over the canker sore and I figured it would be okay. For dinner, I made a homemade goulash. So I don't normally make goulash, I, um, but I didn't want to cook and I had this package of frozen spaghetti sauce that I had made oh, last month sometime and so I thawed it out and I added some cottage cheese and cream cheese and I just turned it into a, a goulash so mainly because I let Paul pick out which pasta Paul's my youngest he's eight so I let him pick out which pasta shape we went with and it was macaroni noodles. So uh, then we had some steamed broccoli as well. Friday for lunch, I had leftover goulash and a prune. So if you want to know what the difference between a prune and a plum is, when you eat a plum, the skin has a tartness to it where it just it catches you off guard, right? And a prune does not. It's sweet all the way through the skin. The like everything is just it's just sweet. So I know people have argued with me and people I know in person have argued with me and said like, oh, a prune is just a dried plum, but it's not. There's a difference. For dinner on Friday, I made a Turkish menemen, which I have no idea if that's pronounced correctly, but it's essentially tomatoes, peppers, and onions, and it's cooked down and stewed and then you throw in some eggs and so you could do like oh, over easy as steamed eggs 
but um, I do kind of a scrambled. I mix it in because just because the, Brian and the kids have preferences on egg texture. But anyway, so we had men and men on toast and oh, I forgot to say I had more chocolate. I had more chocolate in the afternoon. <laughs> Um, uh, then at, at dinner while we were eating, our son Jesse stopped by and he makes the most delicious tacos. And so he brought me a taco and I, I shared it with Brian and, and the boys because it's, it's, he makes them pretty spicy. So Naomi's not into that. And it was a little too spicy. I ended up having to eat it with some sour cream. And then I had more of the men, men on Saturday Brian and I went on a date when well, we tried to do that weekly and so we went to a local brewery and I got a burger and fries and a groza uh, which is uh, it was a watermelon groza which is kind of a uh, it's a tart beer uh, anyway uh, I did not get a video of it. So this is a stock video of something like that I it looked similar. So this is very similar to the burger and beer that I had on Saturday. I'm not normally a beer drinker, but I will drink occasionally like a, a ruby ale or something different. Not uh, Brian drinks like dark stouts and that's not not what I not what I go for. For dinner, we had a roasted butternut squash soup. So in this soup, I put all kinds of things. I did uh, cabbage, onion, carrots, and then I blended it all up with the immersion blender with some beef stock, and then I added a heavy cream. And we had toast with that because I love soup and crusty bread. On Sunday, we had some butternut squash and caramelized onion ravioli. And so I made that and I topped it with, I used the soup from the night before as a, as a sauce. Um, and then I also made some apricot muffins. And of course, ate it with butter, had some green peas on the side. For dinner, a Sunday night is when the older boys come over for dinner. So I made a turkey meatloaf. Um, I'm not a meatloaf. I'm not a meatloaf fan, but the family is, and uh, it was it was it was good as far as meatloafs go. It was good. We had roasted root veggies with it. This is we experimented this week, and we tried uh, parsnips and turnips, uh, rutabaga, um, all things that we I don't normally cook with, and so we tried roasting them just to see how they taste and if we liked them. And then I also did sweet potato and golden potatoes, which we already know that we like. Then I did a shaved Brussels sprout salad. This one just had some green Granny Smith apple and cranberries in it. And then I just used mayonnaise to, for a dressing and mixed it up. So kind of like a Waldorf salad, but I, I don't like nuts in my salads. On Monday, I had leftover Turkish menemen on toast with some raspberries. Now, all the all the toast, all the bread that you see in these videos is homemade sourdough. Um, I just, the texture, it's so good. And then for dinner on Monday, normally um, we have a meal with our church family on Mondays. And so, uh, and then the kids have Taekwondo, Brian and the kids have Taekwondo. So they ate early and left like four o'clock in the afternoon and they left and went to two classes and then it was just me. So I didn't want to cook anything. So I had a bowl of toasted oats with a banana and whole milk. Then I ate another muffin. It was the apricot muffin with butter on it. In making this video, it was very tempting to menu plan and have all my menus, like all my meals planned out so that I had a good amount of different things. Like oh, plenty of vegetables, plenty of fruit, plenty of variety. Uh, but I withheld, I wanted to give you a real perspective of what I actually eat. And 
I eat a lot of leftovers because that's what's available for lunch. That's normally what we would have for lunch. So this is a very typical five days. I still haven't dipped into the kids' Halloween candy. Probably will, but I know that I don't feel good if I eat a bunch of candy. So I'm like mentally preparing like, oh, okay, what day should I eat a bunch of candy so it won't matter how I feel. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> But that's it. I just wanted to give you a real look into what my eating schedule is like, what, what kind of things that I eat regularly. And you can see that I eat plenty of bread. I eat full fat, heavy cream, and butter. <laughs> Everything's better with butter. And I have no formal training in in painting. I just do it to have fun. I make up the animals usually, like sometimes they, they resemble other animals to some extent, but um, generally they're just out of my own imagination and I think it's fun. I love little animals. I have always wanted to to paint like this, to have these kind of things up on my walls. And for so many years, I let the idea of what people thought of me um, really determine how I decorated my house and the activities that I did. And um, and it, I, I wouldn't recommend that at all. I think um, it doesn't matter what people, what people think you should have things in your home that bring you joy and make you smile, put a smile on your face and do things that you enjoy that makes you happy. It took me a long time to get there. I was very insecure and I looked very young. So I know people have said like, oh, this has taken like 10 years off of you. Well, I used to be very thin and most of my life I was about 115 pounds and I looked I did look very young, and so because of that, I always was trying to prove that no, no, I'm, I'm old enough to have children, I'm old enough to be doing these things, and I was always trying to prove myself because I had so many people doubt me or roll their eyes. They would just like, if I said anything, and be like, whatever, she's too young to know anything. And I wasn't, but I just, I looked that way. And so, so, so much of my life, has been spent trying to prove that like no I'm I'm capable and mature and responsible and all that and then um I don't know at some point I just realized to that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what they think like I know I know what I am and my kids know they know I'm their mom <laughs> and and it's it's okay so now I paint and decorate however I want Okay, we're done. <laughs> I'm pleased with it. It has been a while since I have done um, a canvas this big. And so if I had planned it better, I would have made this little guy bigger, but it's okay. He's pretty cute and I like it. So the plan is to hang this up in the corner right over there in the living room. I just threw up a few pictures uh, after we got the new couch, just because we had moved furniture around and everything was higher. And I, anyway, I put a few pictures up because I didn't want to have a blank wall for a long time, but I wasn't really pleased with having the three pictures there. So I wanted to make, paint something to put there and I'll, I'll have to do that in another video. But if you want to know how I manage my art supplies, my painting, my canvases, all of that, and still maintain a minimalist lifestyle, you can check out this video right here.